Today we're going to be looking at how to add tiers to our characters and animate them easily. This video is sponsored by Rococo. Now, one of the shots I was worried about on my short film that I'm working on was doing this tear rolling down the statue's face because I didn't want to do any water simulations and I didn't want to do complex grease pencil effects animations. So I actually came up with another way to do it with some simple modifiers and let's dive into Blender and look at how I achieve this effect and some things we can do to enhance the materials and final render as well. Now here in this example, I use the character rig provided under the CC BY license from the Blender Studio. You can get information on that here. I'll put a link to this in the description below in case you wanna follow along with this character. Now for my effects scene here, I'm gonna go ahead and just utilize the same statue that I did in the short film and kind of walk you through how I did it, but this method will work on any character that you want. So first of all, we need to go ahead and decide where we want the tier to appear on our character or our object. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to hold shift and right click. And what that's going to do is put the 3D cursor on wherever I click. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit here, add a mesh, add a cube, and then you'll see that cube is ginormous. So we're gonna tab in edit mode there and we're gonna scale that down to be quite small. So I'm gonna make mine around there. Great, now what we wanna do is make it so that this tier will go ahead and follow along on the surface. So first what I'm going to do is grab a modifier here. I'm going to go to add modifier and I'm going to add a shrink wrap. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the object or face of whatever character that I want the tier to roll down. So I'm going to go ahead and click this here. And you'll see that at first, this is going to disappear back into the statue. If we go ahead and switch to wireframe, you can see that it's crunching in there. And that's because right now it's set to snap on surface. So we're either going to select outside or outside of surface. So I'm going to go ahead and do outside of surface. And you can see that that's still kind of left it snapped in there. Now I've noticed outside surface works on some and not others. So if it doesn't work, you can generally come over here and click outside and you'll see now that it's kind of working along the side of the surface there and how it's kind of staying on the outside, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to go ahead, add another modifier and we're going to add a subdivision surface. What this is going to do is turn it into kind of a spherical shape. I'm gonna go ahead, right click that shade smooth and you can see we have the beginnings of a teardrop. Now, if you want, you can go through and you can kind of tweak this base cube to get a better shape. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna move on with this shape here. Now, what we wanna do is make this roll down our face. Now we can go ahead and use the shrink wrap and move down, but it doesn't always work and you can kind of get this jittery animation as it kind of tries to snap across vertexes. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to use a curve and a follow curve modifier and then that'll give us complete control over the animation as well. So now with our 3D cursor still here, we're going to hit shift A. We're going to add a curve. Let's add a Bezier curve. Tab into edit mode there. Let's just go ahead, delete that curve's vertices. And now we have nothing there. If we can come over here, we can grab the draw tool here. Up here, make sure you have surface selected. Click here. You can set your offset value, but I found that the default settings tended to work the best. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and draw this path I want the tear to fall down. So I want it to kind of roll down into the crack. So I'm gonna come down here, have it roll down here and come off the edge of the beard. And I'm gonna drop it there. Now, if I come into my front view here, I can see that because I used the on surface, it kind of drew back and snapped onto the body of the character. So what I'm going to do is come up here to this box select, grab this and move this down here and then kind of rotate this because I want it to look like my tears falling off. So it's going to follow the direction of the curve and these handles. So if I go ahead and grab that and move that down, then it's going to kind of roll off there and then fall down the side. Great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our tier here. I'm going to twirl the subdivision up here. I'm going to come down here to the object constraint. I'm going to add an object constraint here, and then I'm going to add a follow path. Now I'm going to go ahead and select that Bezier curve, which we'll call tier path. Great. And you'll notice that our tier shot off into the distance way up here. Let's go ahead and name that tier. And that's because honestly, the follow path modifier works a bit odd. I think it should work at both objects origins, but instead what it does is work at the world origin. So what we wanna do is grab our tier there and we're gonna come up to the item here and we can see our location there. So if we click this top one, we can drag down and make these all zero here. And then once we zero out the position of our tier and we zoom back in on it, you can see that now that position has reset and is on where it should be 
on the path. It's a bit of an odd workflow and something I kind of hope they change in future Blender versions, but for now, that's how it works. Great, so now that we have that done, we wanna go ahead and change some settings over here. Now, right now, to get this to move along the path, if we go ahead and drag it, you can see that it won't snap there. We would have to click Animate Path, and then that would create keyframes on our Bezier curve down here on the path animation, and then that would allow us to kind of have animation there, but that doesn't give us much control. So we actually wanna change some settings there on the object property. So we actually want fixed position. And all of these should work by default if you've been following along with this tutorial, but if you notice that your tier is kind of facing an odd direction or whatever, you can kind of click around the forward and up axis until you get exactly what you're looking for. But with this fixed position, now we can animate with the offset factor here, which allows us to create an animation for our tier. So let's look at how we could do a simple animation for our tier. So let's go ahead here, drag this down. I'm going to turn this into the graph editor. And let's go ahead, shorten this range to about 120 frames. I'm gonna to go to the beginning here. And if you click this, it will insert an animated keyframe on your offset factor. So there it will start at zero at the top. And then what we're going to do is move up to a hundred. And let's go ahead and set this to around there. And then we can go ahead and go to 120 and then have that kind of fall off. So let's see what that looks like. So go ahead and hit play there. You'll see that it kind of slowly rolls down the face and then drops off. And that's a little too fast. So we'll go ahead and grab this 100. We'll bring this back to something like 60. And that should give us a bit more of a natural fall off. Great. So now what we can do is if we select our graph here, we can press A to select everything and press period on our numpad. And that will allow us to zoom in. And we can actually go ahead and grab this one here, hit S and then X. That allows to kind of scale out and give us a little bit of a harsher easing so that it takes a while before it falls off. Perfect. You can go ahead and move this keyframe around until that curve looks a bit more natural. That looks great. Up here, we can grab this keyframe, hit R and rotate, and that'll give us kind of a linear fall off because once it kind of gains speed, it's just going to keep moving forward. We don't want it to ease and slow down. And if we look over here, we can see that that's starting to look a bit more natural. Perfect. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and grab our tier here. We can press N to open the panel here. And with the transform sections here under the item, we can right click on the scales and hit insert keyframes, which will insert a keyframe on all of those. Now we can go ahead, turn the eye on our graph for the offset factor off here. And now we can only control our scale keyframes. So let's go ahead, let's move this up to maybe 12, hit shift D with all those selected, move that across there. We come back here to the beginning. We can turn all of these to zero. So I just click the top one and drag down and that allows me to change them all at once. We can change that to zero. And you can see now that the tier wells up and then falls down and you can adjust that timing for whatever you think works best. I'm gonna do something like around here. Great. Now what I wanna do is once the tier falls off here, I want that tier to stretch. So what we're going to do is insert a keyframe here. So with the selected, we will press I and only selected channels and great. Now we will go to the next two frames there. Now let's go ahead and change that Z up to 0.2. And then we'll go ahead and change both of these to 0.5 so that it kind of gets that stretched look. And now we can go ahead and watch our tear roll down our face here and see that it falls and then stretches off. And I would go ahead and make that fall a bit faster, but for the sake of the time of this tutorial, let's go ahead and move forward. One other thing you can do to add a bit of that kind of like anime tier effect to it with the animation is you can go ahead, you can grab, let's grab this X here and zoom in on there. We're gonna add a bit of wiggle factor and that'll give it that kind of like anime, kind of like wiggle or jiggle that you see when they do on their tiers. We'll go ahead and we'll add noise modifier to this. It's a bit extreme. So we're gonna go ahead and up the scale and lower the strength just a bit. And we want this to apply on all of our scales uniformly. So we can click this little button here, the copy modifier, click here, click that button, click here, click that button, and that will add it to all of them. And now when it comes in, you can see how it's kind of jittering a bit and you can play with the scale and size. I had my scale a little bit lower, which made it kind of more jittery as it moved down. Now let's look at how we can get a look of a tier here. So let's go ahead and we can go to our render section here and we can go ahead and add a new shader. So let's call this the tier shader. 
Now, you can do a tune shader, and there are already a lot of tutorials online with great tune shaders. I wanted to show something that worked in cycles, and I kind of wanted to do something with like an actual transparent tier, but with some cartoony elements on it. So I'll show you what I did there. What I did is I went ahead, turned the transmission up, and then I turned the roughness down to something like 0.1. And you want to make sure that you have something like an HDRI within your world, even if the strength is set to really low. And that'll give you some reflections to make the tier a bit more visible. And then I wanted the roughness just a tiny bit so that it could actually catch the light. Now, this is unrealistic, but I grabbed the specular and cranked that up. And what that's going to do is make those highlights appear a little bit brighter. And then I actually right clicked with holding shift onto my tier and I held shift A and I'm going to go ahead and add in a light. Let's add a point light. And you can see how that's giving it that kind of like highlight there. And you can go ahead and just offset that a tiny bit. And that'll give it that kind of like more cartoony um, looking highlight. So let's go ahead and get out of the view there. And then what you can do is you can actually parent that light to your eye by grabbing the light, then the eye and hitting control P, object transform. And then you can go ahead and animate the power of the light. So we have our 12 here. Let's go ahead, animate the power of our light. Go ahead here, put this down to zero. That way the light doesn't appear until our tear appears and you can see it kind of comes up with it and then moves down. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually play with some effects here in the compositor. So I'm gonna go back to my other project file and show you some things I did to kind of enhance that tear effect in this image here. So you can see here, I actually have my view layer and a tear layer. And if I come over here to the tears layer, you can see that I don't have anything visible in the scene but the tears, but I still have the lighting visible. So what you can do is you can come up here to the filters and you can turn on these two right here. And by putting your tiers in their own collection and making them visible, you can then take your other collections with all your other objects and click this on. That way your tiers will appear in your scene and render with all the other lights in the scene affecting them, but you will only get the tiers on that render. So let's see what that looks like in the compositor. So I'll switch over here to the compositing tab and we can go ahead and render here so that we can see it in our backdrop. All right, so I've gone ahead and hit render here so you can see what we're doing. So here we have two render layers. And if I go ahead and hit control shift and click this one, you can see that this is just our tiers. And then this is our character here. And we're gonna go ahead and make this a bit more uh, visible with kind of some adding some various effects to it here. So what you can do is you can grab that tier layer and your render layer. And what you wanna do is set your tiers down here and your view layer up here. You can grab a mixed node and mix those onto each other. Put the tiers on the bottom and set the factor to one and set that to add. And what that's going to do, if I go ahead and mute here, is that's going to add kind of a lot of brightness back into the tiers. And then after that, we can set a glare node on there and also use the add to add that on there to make the effect brighter. And with that glare node, what you wanna do is make sure that the threshold's high enough so it really only affects those highlights on the tier. So if I go ahead and set this to the output view. You can see here that with the mix factor set to one, it will only show the glare. So here I have the tier, and then I'm using this mix node to add that back in. And I'll make sure to leave this on screen long enough so you can copy this setup if you want. And we can come back here and see our final result. So with all these kind of techniques in combination, you can end up getting kind of final results like I have here. And I hope that you found this useful. This is something that I've been trying to figure out for quite some time. And I was pretty happy with how simple the solution turned out. You can see here kind of the jitter I have turned on and I actually kind of played with the scale as it moved down to give it more of a realistic drop. But I'd love to see what you create from these. So please tag me on whatever you make on at Southern Shabby on Instagram or YouTube or wherever you share. Again, thank you for taking time to watch and I'll see you next time. Rococo provided me a full set of their suit with facial motion capture, hand capture, and body capture. Now Rococo uses a magnetic-based system to detect its motion, and it works over Wi-Fi, which is awesome because what this means is that anywhere with a laptop, computer, or Wi-Fi connection, you can record high-quality motion capture data without the need of a multi-million dollar studio. If you're familiar with Ian Humberts and his Blender channel, he uses it in his videos to help motion capture and apply that data to some of his humanoid characters. 
I've actually been using this on some of my VR work for prototyping and recording my hands to be in the foreground. Rococo offers incredibly high quality studio level motion capture data at a much more affordable price than the competition. Now, if you're not interested in buying an entire motion capture setup, you can actually check out their library, which has affordable options to download a ton of animations that you can use in your games, animations, visual effects, and more. Of course, I'll link to everything below so you can check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below.